Brian, and in this video I'm going to show you how I put together this Mars scene. Uh, I call the scene 31 because right before this I did one that I called 30, so 31 would be next. I start with some XPF foam, I cut down to the approximate size I'd like the final rock to be. You can draw on it to get its rough final shape as well. It can be handy to have that reference, but not necessary. I often just start hacking in whatever shape it ends up is the shape it ends up. I'll go at it with a box cutter. First, just whittling down the bulk of it. You want to get rid of the flat factory surfaces. You're just trying to define the overall shape at this point. The box cutter is really sharp too, so I always wear a heavy leather work glove on my non-knife hand when I'm cutting. You can do some real damage to your fingers. So, just be careful. Safety first. I start cutting the striations. These are the geological strata that you'd see in sedimentary rock. They should be roughly parallel, but not uniform. Some levels will be wider than others. I hack at the foam in the same direction, but with the blade at different angles to carve out the recesses between the levels. And cut some big chunks out. You wanna mess up any regular surfaces. I'll hit it with some lines uh, that are against the grain. These kind of look like fault lines. Cut out big chunks. And I'll go at it with a wire brush. This gives a level of detail to the final surface that will pick up the paint and accentuate the reveals nicely. I really push it here. You want to be knocking out some of the chunks near that were loosened in the previous stages. I keep the majority of the wire brush strokes along the same direction as the major strata lines. I brush the whole base with a thick layer of white glue or Mod Podge. I make sure you get it all. Cover the whole thing. And I'll lay some of the bigger stones first. These big stones, I'm using some crushed plaster that it separated into different sizes. And I'm spooning on smaller sized. Next I'm putting on some railroading talus. I'm using this to form some mounds and add some variation to the otherwise flat base. I spray with some isopropyl. This is to wet the rocks and I can use a dropper to place some half and half white glue and water over the mounds. This is going to keep it all together. For my top layer, I'm using some fine sand, uh, the type of sand that you'd use for uh, like a reptile enclosure. I'm going to use an old ketchup bottle as my dispenser. Then more isopropyl and more glue. Keep going over it all and adding layers. You're better off adding many thin layers and gluing and spraying between each than adding one thick layer that may absorb the glue unevenly. Now I'm adding a wash to everything. I used a watered down dark brown acrylic. I'm just using craft acrylics here. I've also added some glue to this wash as well because I want that finished surface to be really hard and durable so that I can paint it and work on it without constantly chipping off pieces. I 
I make sure I get the wash on everything, all the reveals and cracks, so that I have a consistent base to work over. Before I move on to the next stage, I make sure the wash is really dry. I usually leave it for about a day. Once the wash is completely dry, I use an airbrush on my next layer. I'm just using a flat black primer. You could do this with a darker wash and a brush if you don't have an airbrush. The purpose of this layer is to get the shadow areas of the rocks and the overhangs. So you want the airbrush to be at a really low angle. I also want to get the edges here. If you missed any of the uh, previous layer with the wash, it'll be really visible here on the edges. So you want to make sure you get the edges. I use the airbrush to apply a marbling effect over the surface. You don't want to treat the entire surface to be uniform. It'd look too unnatural if it was consistent. So variation's a good thing here. You'll have to wait until the black is completely dry before going over it with a lighter brown. This is applied mostly on the top of surfaces. It should be sprayed in a downward direction so the undersides of the rocks stay dark, like they're kind of always in shadow. This creates a, a painted shadow effect. It may require a couple of coats. I did about four coats. Dry brushing is my favorite part. I'm going to mix some white and brown and knock most of it off the brush before I apply it to the model so it really is a dry brush. All I'm hitting here is the highlights. For the sides, I'll use a thinned black acrylic. I'll do a couple coats. I'm going to be mounting one of my own vehicles to the base. There will be a link in the description to where you can get the 3D print files for the vehicle and I'll be posting videos on how it's printed and assembled as well. I'm going to lay out where I want the vehicle to be placed. I've designed the chassis of these vehicles to have a hole in them so this is where the mounting pin can be placed. It's also a place that you can put a conduit if you wanted to put any wiring or lighting uh, up from the base into the vehicle. So I'll mark the spot where the hole is over the base with a nail and then I'll drill out the hole only needs a drop of glue in the hole. I'm using foam glue here. Once dry, uh, this will cement the whole thing together really well. and Nothing's going to be moving. I've designed a plug specifically for mounting these vehicles. It holds everything really snug and it's hollow so that you can bring wiring or fiber optics up from the base if you'd like. I also have a video that uh, shows how I add fiber optics to uh, the hull as well. The figure that I'm going to use has a tab on his foot, so I just need to poke a little hole where he's going to go, and he'll fit in there pretty snugly. So this is model 31. Nothing I've done here is the best way to do anything, it's just the way that I've done it for this model. I'm always trying new things and learning what works and what doesn't. I'm always experimenting. If you want to see more, please subscribe and check out my website where you can get the models that I'm working on in these videos. You can find all that in my description. Thanks for watching. Take her easy.